Hi there, and welcome to this lesson on Pure Mathematics 3 from the Edexcel International A-Level. We're on Chapter 2, Functions and Graphs, and we're up to 2.4, Inverse Functions. Now, the inverse of a function is the complete opposite of the original function. If the original function is f of x, then the way we write the inverse function is f to the minus 1 of x. Now, be a little bit careful. In some contexts, that minus 1 would be read as a power. So, for example, if you had x to the minus 1, that would mean 1 over x, the reciprocal of x. In this case, the same symbol means inverse function. Normally, it is pretty obvious from the context whether they're talking about an inverse function or whether they're talking about a reciprocal, but do be careful with it. Uh, a function and its inverse function, because they're the complete opposite of each other, if you do both of them together and operate on uh, a value x in either direction, either f inverse first and then f, or f first and then f inverse, they do cancel each other out, and you just end up where you started with x. Now, that's a little bit confusing. So what we're saying is, for example, squared and square root, they're inverse functions to each other. If you do the square root of 5 squared, they just cancel each other out, and that gives you 5. Or inverse sine and sine are inverse functions to each other. If you do the inverse sine of sine 30, they just cancel each other out. That would give you 30 degrees. The domain of f of x will always be the same as the range of the inverse function. So the domain of the one function is the range of the other function, and vice versa. The range of f of x is the domain of the inverse function. That's very important and worth remembering. Uh, the other thing that really matters with inverse functions is graphically what is going on. The graphs of the function and its inverse are reflections of each other in the line y equals x. Now, what does that mean? The graphs of f of x and the inverse function of x are reflections of each other in y equals x. So, for instance, if you had some function y equals f of x, it's a straight line heading up in that direction. If we wanted to draw the inverse of that function, the first thing that we would do is draw the line y equals x, which is the line that goes up diagonally from left to right. And we would then reflect the line in y equals x. So this bit here would reflect up there, this bit here would reflect down there. And that would give you that. So the green line would be the graph of the inverse function, the purple line is the graph of the original function. That's always the case. Uh, the one is the reflection of the other in y equals x. Uh, you need to know the algebraic method for finding the inverse of a function. The first step is you need to write whatever you've got in the form y equals some function of x and then change the subject of the equation to x so that instead you have x equals some function of y. f of y is the inverse function. So once you've done this, you have got the inverse function. But there is a, a second step, just to tidy things up a little bit. You swap the y's into x's, just to get the standard notation for the inverse function of x. For example, Find the inverse of the function f of x equals 3x minus 5. Now, I've left the instructions there. Have a go yourself first. See if you can do this. Um, pause the video. Come back when you're ready. OK, we'll go through it together. So we've got f of x equals 3x minus 5. The first step is to write that in normal language. So function language would say f of x is 3x minus 5. The language that you're more familiar with from, uh, from geometry, analytic geometry, is y equals 3x minus 5. That's the first step. Now we need to rewrite it. Rather than having y on its own, we need to get x on its own. So we'll move the 5 across to get y plus 5. Then we'll move the 3 across to get y plus 5 over 3 is equal to x. I'll just swap sides so it looks a bit more normal. 
x equals y plus 5 over 3. That is the inverse function, y plus 5 over 3. But it's more normal to write the function in terms of x. So the, the last step is just rewriting that, swapping the y into an x. And that is the inverse function in terms of x. f inverse of x would be equal to x plus 5 divided by 3. OK, here's a longer, for example, for you to have a go at. There's quite a few steps to this. Um, it could take a little while to do. I would pause the video, keep the instructions there, have a go at doing all of this yourself, and come back to me when you are ready. OK, I'll go through the whole of the question with you. So the first thing we're asked to do is a whole lot of curve sketching. We're asked to sketch y equals f of x, uh, the line y equals x, and to sketch the inverse function, even though we don't know what it is, all on the same graph. So we'll do that. Now, the original function is x squared plus 2. x squared plus 2 looks a bit like that. It comes down to a minimum at 2 and uh, curves up in a normal fashion on either side. Now, it would be that, except there is a restriction on the domain for x. It says x can be any number, a real number, but it has to be bigger than or equal to zero. x can't be negative. So actually, we're not supposed to have this bit here on the left-hand side. That now obeys the restrictions given in the domain. x squared plus 2, where x has to be a positive number. The next thing you need to do is to draw y equals x. So y equals x is the line that goes diagonally upwards, left to right. Once you've drawn that, you can now draw the inverse function. So the inverse function will be a reflection of that curve in this line. So it's going to reflect from up here down to over there. Now we don't know what the function is, but we do know what it looks like. It'll look exactly like that, a perfect reflection of the green line. Tricky to do by hand, this. And if I was doing it by hand, I would not have scales on the axes, uh, as I said in a previous lesson. I'd just be... Uh, earmarking the, the important points, but not trying to do things accurately, plotting points, drawing scales. That isn't necessary when you're doing a sketch. Okay, that's question one done. Question two asks us to state the range of the original function. Now, the original function, that's the green one. The moment you see the word range, you have to think y values. What are the y values that f of x can take? So what are the y values that this green graph can take? Well, it starts at 2 and heads upwards indefinitely. So the range is any number from 2 upwards. And that's how you'd write it. You'd say the range of f of x is y has to be a real number. That just means it's got to be any normal number. And then the restriction. The restriction is the important bit. It's got to be bigger than or equal to 2. That would be the range. The third question asks us to state the domain and the range of the inverse function. So we're looking at the purple one now. The domain is the x values. Now, the x values start at 2 and head up indefinitely. The range will be the y values. The y values start at 0. And whilst it goes up slowly, it will head up indefinitely. So for the domain, it can be any number bigger than 2. For the range, any number bigger than 0. Domain is the x values, range is the y values. That's where you write it down. So the domain of the inverse function is x is any number, but bigger than or equal to 2. The range is y is a real number, but it must be bigger than or equal to 0. Uh, a small thing to note here, which is important, uh, we mentioned it before. If you look at the domain of the original function, You've got to have a value which is greater than or equal to zero. If you look at the range of the inverse function, same thing. It's got to be greater than or equal to zero. The range of the original function, a value greater than or equal to two. The domain of the inverse function, a value greater or equal to two. That is always the case with functions and inverse functions. The domain of the one thing is the range of the other. The range of the one thing is the domain of the other. Do remember that. Now, part four on the question said, find the inverse function. 
Well, that's going back to the very first thing we did in the lesson, where we used the algebraic method for working out an inverse function. So rewriting that instead of f of x equals x squared plus 2, we've written in terms of y. y equals x squared plus 2. y and f of x, they are always interchangeable. They mean the same thing. We need to rearrange it, getting x on its own. So we'll move the 2 across. Then we'll square root both sides. That gives us x equals the square root of y minus 2. Now that is the inverse function. Rewriting it in terms of x means just swapping the y to an x. So the inverse function in terms of x is the square root of x minus 2. That's part 4 done. Part 5 asked us to show graphically that the equation f of x equals f inverse of x has got no solution. Well, we've done the graph now. That's what the graph looks like. There's the function. There's the inverse function. So how do we show graphically that there is no solution to the one thing equals the other thing? Graphically, if you're ever asked to solve an equation, you're looking for where the two things cross each other. So we want to know where f of x and the inverse function of x, where do they cross each other? Well, they never cross each other. That's all you have to see, and that's all you have to say. f of x and f inverse of x never cross. They never meet. They never touch. Therefore, f of x equals f inverse of x has got no solution. That's all that's required. Now, there's a final example just to illustrate one point. All the hard work has been done for you. So all the sketching of all the graphs and their inverses, that is all done. What you're asked to do is just one thing. And I'll let you have a go at it first, and then I'll talk about it. So the question says, given f of x equals x squared minus 3, that's the green graph. The inverse function is the square root of x plus 3. That's the purple graph. And we've also drawn y equals x in there. We're asked to solve the equation f of x equals the inverse function of x. Well, that's where they cross. This time they do cross. Okay, I'll let you have a go at this first, uh, and then when you're ready, come back to me. Okay, let's have a little think about this. f of x has to equal the inverse function of x. Well, f of x, that's x squared minus 3. We're down the bottom here. The inverse function of x, that's the root of x plus 3. These two things have to be equal to each other. So graphically, we're saying, where do they cross? Algebraically, we're saying, when does the one thing equal the other thing? That's the equation we need to solve. Looks fairly harmless, but it's not as harmless as it appears. We've got this square root. The way to get rid of the square root is to square both sides of the equation. So we'll square the left-hand side and get that, square the right-hand side, and we do get rid of the square root. That's the good news. The bad news is what's going on over here. We've got x squared minus 3 all squared. Now, when we square that bracket and tidy the terms up, collecting these over onto the other side, this is what you get, a quartic equation. Now, quartic equations are very awkward, tricky to find all the solutions of them. Uh, and in general, you wouldn't be able to solve this equation. But there is another way for doing the question. The important thing to notice is this point here. It's where the function crosses the inverse function. Uh, by the way, that purple one there, um, that should say inverse function there. That is a small mistake. So it's where the function crosses the inverse function. But that's not the only thing that crosses there. And this isn't a coincidence. It always happens. Where the function and the inverse function cross, they will also cross the line y equals x. It's not surprising, because the one is a reflection of the other. That's a bit like the moment when the two things both meet the mirror, and they meet the mirror at the same point. That's significant, and it gives you another way to solve this equation because all three lines meet at the same point. So down the bottom here, when f of x equals the inverse function of x, it is always also true that f of x just equals x, because it equals the line y equals x. 
And that gives us a much, much easier equation to solve. So going back to the original question, as it was stated, that was what we were given, that was what we were asked to solve. We don't have to. We can just solve f of x equals x. f of x is x squared minus 3, x is x. That gives us a quadratic. We'd solve that using the quadratic formula, and it gives us two solutions. Um, x equals 1 plus or minus root 13 divided by 2. Now, if you remember the graph, there weren't two crossing points. There was only one crossing point. From the graph, you can see actually that the negative solution that you would get from here is not possible. It doesn't cross there. There is a reason for that, but we won't worry about it for the moment. For that reason, you can ignore the negative solution and say the answer that we want is the positive one. 1 plus root 13 over 2. And that is the, the final answer. OK, if you have the textbook, go to page 26, have a go at exercise 2D. And that is the end of the lesson. Thank you very much for listening.